how to get rich in your 30s? We're gonna answer that question in this video. Okay, let's rock. Let's talk about how do you get rich in your 30s? It's important to understand that hopefully in your 20s, you're doing something smart for your finances and you were building. Because they say the goal is at least when I was in my 20s getting to 30 back then is you'd like to be worth at least $100,000 by the time you turn 30 years old. That's the goal. It's a lot easier to obtain that now because the money's different, right? Money has inflated and things like that. So the number might be more like 200 or 250,000. So if you haven't got there yet, don't sweat it, don't worry. There's still plenty of time to make that money in your 30s. A decade is a massive amount of time. Most people overestimate the amount of money that they can accumulate and make in the course of a year. They're like, oh, I can do this. And in a year, you know, when they do their New Year's resolutions, they're like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this this year. And they massively over-exaggerate it. And then they let themselves down like, ah, I didn't get there. But most of us massively underestimate what we can accomplish in a decade, in 10 years. That's a true statement. Like my life today versus 10 years ago, financially is like light and day. And it, was, and it didn't even take the full 10 years, but 10 years, it's crazy how much you can accomplish. So don't beat yourself down just because you're not getting there this week, this month, this year, next year. Give yourself that full 10 years. So if you're 30 years old and you're like, all right, I'm out of my 20s, I'm just turning that new stone, I gotta figure this out, I got to be a millionaire by the time I'm 40, listen up, I'm here to show you how to do it. Okay, so we need to understand, we need to understand the laws of compound interest you need to understand investing and you need to be able to invest your money smart and put it in places that's relatively safe. Every investment's gonna have some level of risk, but relatively safe that's earning you a good fair interest rate so that you can continue to snowball and build that savings so you can become that millionaire by the time you're 40. And so there's a couple things you gotta understand. Number one is the rule of 72. Let's learn about the rule of 72. This is a number that you use to compute how long it takes to double money based off of a set interest rate. So for simplicity's sake, let's say you're averaging 7.2% interest per year. You'll, it'll take you 10 years because you divide that number by 72. That's an easy one. It'll take you 10 years to double your money. So if you put in like $10,000 into an investment that averaged 7.2% return per year, in 10 years, it's gonna double, right? So your $100,000, your 10,000 will turn into 20,000. Your 100,000 will turn into 200,000. That's the rule of 72. Now, what if you could take that same investment, let's say $10,000, and you could get 18% return? So you take the number 72, you divide it by 18, and the answer is four. That means it'll only take four years to double money if you're earning 18% return per year. Basically, if you're earning 18% interest on your money per year, it only takes four years. There's some people, you know, they're hyper aggressive in real estate and they know how to buy real estate right. They know how to rent it out and get rental income. And they earn like 30, 35, 40%. Let's call it 36%, okay? In two years, every two years they double their money. It's crazy how fast you can double money. So what you need to find out you need to look at all the different asset classes, all the different categories of where you can put money, okay? And look at what the typical types of return are in each of those asset classes. So like maybe in the stock market, and I'm making this up, you know, you can feel free to correct me because I'm just going from memory, but let's say in the stock market over the last 50 years, maybe it's averaged five, 6% return, right? Something like that, five or 6%. Well, geez, that might take like 12, 13, 14 years to double your money at, at that average uh, interest rate, okay? Let's say gold, maybe gold's only averaged 3% over the last 50 years or whatever the number is. Wow, that's, I mean, 72 divided by three, what's that, 24? 24 years of double, that's a long time. Heck, if you put it in a bank, they pay you almost nothing, right? Basically, you're gonna be dead before they double your money if you don't ever touch it. And what's important to understand when you're doing this is you cannot touch the money. You cannot touch the principal, which is the initial investment. You have to let it roll. You have to let it ride. And that's how it continues to accumulate. And they talk about ex exponential growth is because you're taking the base of what you made and you're letting the interest, the compounded interest that you earned on that money accumulate and that continues to stack, okay? So look at the different asset classes, all the different spots. 
And I usually end up coming back to something like real estate. And the reason I say that is because in real estate, you physically have something for your money. I don't like the idea, uh, you know, I'm not saying st the stock market's bad, there's a lot of money to be made in the stock market, but when you're buying stocks, you're basically invested into companies, and do you really know those companies? Have you physically gone there and visited them and met the board of directors? Heck, they might change next year. The company might not be around, you might lose all your money. So you can't physically have really much other than like a paper stock that says you own shares of that company. Yes, there's a lot of money to be made, but like the reason I go back to real estate is when you buy it with your hard-earned money, you physically have that house with the wood, with the roof, right? With the bedrooms, you own the house, you have something. And historically, real estate has appreciated in value. So it just continues to go up over time. It's also got something that's huge. Residential real estate specifically has intrinsic value, right? It's, it's real value, meaning it doesn't really matter what the market price is. It doesn't matter that they said, oh, that house that's worth 150,000, the real estate market's really tough. It's only worth 120 now. Okay, that's on paper. That's like the perceived value. Instead of 150, it's worth 120 because the real residential real estate market is tough. I get that. But wait a second. People got to live, right? It's an actual necessity of life. So regardless of whether or not it's worth 120 grand or 150 grand, the house has real value, intrinsic value. It's got real actual value that people will rent it out. People will buy it because they need somewhere for their family to live. So again, that's why I keep coming back to that. So if that's the case, let's focus on that example. So if you wanna get rich in your 30s, one spot might be, right? I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm just kind of talking out loud here. One spot might be to get into rental properties, residential rental properties. It's a lot of work. It's not the easiest, right? You've gotta learn it. You can't be lazy. You gotta put in the time, but just think about it. If you can start by investing and buy a couple cheap homes, Find a friend that's a contractor, they'll make you a fair, fair deal so you can start negotiating you know, good, you know, good labor rates and stuff like that with your friends so you know how much you're signing up for. And maybe you can buy a house for 30, 40,000, let's say $40,000, put 10 grand into it, right? You got 50 into it and start renting it out for a thousand bucks a month, all right? Now you're making $12,000 a year gross profit off this rental property, you have zero debt on it, the property's gonna appreciate, on average, it's gonna continue to appreciate over time. So that's like a bonus. So you get a kind of double dip here. You make money on the appreciation of the house. You make money off the income. And then take that income and throw it into a, like back into the real estate business. And some people, I'll tell you what they do, they get hyper aggressive. And they say, you know what, I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna wait till the next one's paid off. I'm gonna wait till I have enough to put a down payment on the next one, right? They wanna get aggressive, right? So it's obviously more risky when you have debt, but hear me out here. So this is a possible way that you could get really rich in your 30s. So you start out, and so you, you said, you know, I got to be 30 years old, I saved up a bunch of money, let's say $50,000, and I'm gonna dump all that money into a piece of real estate, and I'm gonna start renting it out. So now you got some money generated. And then after like a year or two, you're like, wow, I kinda like this. You know, there's not a lot of maintenance. You know, my renters are cool, they're paying on time, I'm making this money, I just stored it away, it's just sitting there. Wow, now after a couple of years, I've saved $20,000. And you go, wow, I got actually enough money. I'm gonna to go to a bank and I'm gonna use the house that I own free and clear in cash. I'm gonna use that as collateral. I'm gonna to go to a bank and say, you can have this house as collateral and I wanna borrow these enough money to buy these two houses that are each $40,000 a piece, right? And I want you to loan me the money and I'll put down the 20%. So I'll put down $10,000 per house. And it might need a little bit more money, right, to fix it up or whatever, but we're not counting that right now. And so now you've gone from having one house in a couple years to having three houses. So now maybe you're generating yourself like $3,000 a month in income, right? And so now in a few years, you can either utilize that money that you're getting to pay off the houses. So now you got three houses free and clear in a few years. If you do the math, you could probably pay them off in four or five years, depending on how aggressive it is and what kind of like speed bumps come up. Like, you know, are there repairs and things like that, issues that you have to deal with. But assuming that's not the case, now you've got three houses in a few years that are paid off. Maybe in your mid thirties, you, these three houses are worth 200, $250,000. And now you're making a few thousand dollars a month. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to redo that. I'm going to, this time I'm going to buy five houses because you've got the money. And maybe you've got some other business that's generating more money. And you're like, I'm going to buy five houses now. Now you've got eight. So if you follow this regimen, right? And there's obviously, you know, you're going to have ups and downs and, and issues that you deal with. It's not going to be smooth sailing, but theoretically, this is a real way you can get rich in your 30s. So that by the time you hit 40, 
Theoretically, you could be a millionaire. You could have a million dollars in value, depending on your market, in the real estate value plus the income. So the income by itself plus the value is gonna be able to make you rich. So there's a lot of other possible ways to get rich. There's a lot of more aggressive ways. You know, some people like cryptocurrency right now. That's one thing that I like to play with. And there's a lot of ways for that to potentially make you a lot of money fast, but that's not what I'm trying to pitch. I'm trying to pitch long-term, slow, organic growth ways to get rich. And that's one good way that I feel. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like it and don't forget to comment. I'd love to hear what ideas you have about future videos and please subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that subscribe button below. And remember in life and in business, it's never easy for anybody. So as life beats you up and, and, and knocks you down, remember, pick yourself up, don't quit, never quit. And as I always say, push hard, keep pushing and be a hustler.